Hey guys, I'm back with the carving of maxillary right second premolar. Now take a wax block and mark the midline on each surface. Also label it as labial, lingual, mesial and distal. Now for the crown, uh, take 8.5 mm and for the root 14.0 mm. Now uh, we have to divide the crown part in three equal thirds that is occlusal, middle and cervical third. Now for the mesodistal diameter of crown at cervix we have to take 5.0 mm and 7.0 mm at the contact area. Now we have to draw a line like this to get a trapezoid. Now we have to remove the excess area. Now we have to carve the slopes. A mesial slope of the buccal cusp rays is usually shorter than the distal slope. Now we'll remove the excess part like this. In case of maxillary second premolar, the buccal cusp is not as long as that of the first premolar and also it appears less pointed. In case of second premolar, uh, the buccal cusp is not as long as that of the first premolar and also it appears less pointed. Now we'll do the same for the lingual surface and in case of uh, second premolar the lingual cusp is at the same height of the buccal cusp.
Now we'll cut the occlusal table. The buckle and link will cusp. The outline of the crown is more rounded and oval. There is a, a central groove and uh, many uh, supplementary grooves we have to carve. Now we have carved the crown portion of maxillary second premolar now for the roof from the label aspect it's thicker in uh, cervical portion And also the root apex is tilted towards the mesial side. Now we will remove the excess part.
there is developmental depression on the root of maxillary second premolar and which is a more deeper in distal aspect than the mesial one Now we have got uh, the maxillary second premolar. Now we have to draw the cervical outline like this on the buccal, mesial, palatal, and distal surface. So this was the carving of maxillary second premolar for the right side. Now watch my next video for the carving of mandibular first premolar.